No, the title is not clickbait. There is a one terabyte Raspberry Pi 4 image. Now, a lot of you have been running Raspberry Pis on hard drives, and this is not really a big deal. But this is a little different. It's an add-on pack. It's a little different method methodology, and it allows for kind of a modular design, if you will. So with all that said, we're going to be checking out V-Man's expansion packs, and he has so many packs now that he is now over one terabyte of games. Now, a lot of there's big hyperspin and all sorts of big uh, coin ops collections out there. So I know this isn't that big of a deal, especially for you uh, people out there. But this image just continues to deliver. And I'm going to show you some of the add on packs, how to add it on, and how easy it is. Also, some little things I found along the way. All right. So I have my Ethernet connected, or you can set up your Wi Fi and I'm gonna go ahead and run the VMAN post scripts. This is gonna go ahead and update to the latest scripts where he has added the USB extension. All right, that also reboots your Raspberry Pi. So let's go ahead and let it reboot, and then we're gonna go back to the options menu. All right, so our hard drive's hooked up. We updated our post script, so we have the latest script for this um, you know, USB mode that we're gonna be doing, the USB expansion, go ahead and go there. Options, emula um, emulation tools, and then the, there's only one USB mode, and then there, and then uh, we click the script, and then it said disable or enable. We wanna go ahead and enable it. And right now it's running scripts. It's A, checking that there's a hard drive connected. Two, it's going to make sure it's NTS, NTFS formatted. If it's FAT32 or XFAT, it'll tell you, and it'll just stop the script right there. Um, number three, it's gonna sync it up. And then it's going to start building in those file directories. And then lastly, it's going to say thanks to Forrest at Easy Hacks and to Play for some tweaks. And uh, then you're all done. You want to go ahead at this point. It should just turn off. Um, if it doesn't turn off, just wait a while, then power off your Pi. Then remove the hard drive from your Raspberry Pi USB slot and plug it back into a computer where you're going to be transferring the ROMs. Another option though is you could just turn it back on and then do this all through the network as well. Just go up to your Windows Explorer, type it in and should automatically find it. Should get into our Pi here, we have our ROMs. And then um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete my Thomas Wave. Go ahead and delete it. And then I should have it on here now. Yeah, I already transferred it over. So this is the one I downloaded the game list, the new artwork, everything. So in the next couple screens, you'll see that when you have that hard drive attached, you actually get two ROM directories on your um, Raspberry Pi. Now here I was just showing where I'm checking to make sure that I'm deleting the ROMs on the SD card, uh, you know, the original image, and then I'm making sure I have them transferred over to my hard drive at the same time. And uh, at the end of the day, you just wanna make sure the packs are on the hard drive and then they're deleted on the SD card. Um, the other thing is what I'm going to show you in just a second is I found out I also need to keep the game list on the SD card portion of the image as well. When it's all said and done and you're ready, go ahead and disconnect the hard drive from your computer, turn off your Raspberry Pi, plug in the hard drive, and then on the next boot, because you enabled that hard drive script, it's going to go ahead and try to detect it. And when it detects it and you boot up, you're going to notice you're going to have all those directories with all the games in it and all the video snaps working and them working just fine. Remember to use a USB 3.0 hard drive and take advantage of that faster data rate because it will give a better seamless experience. So if you notice, once you have the hard drive script, they actually separate it out. So you have your SD card here, your USB here, and um, you want to delete the ROMs from the SD card. So for example, um, a Thomas Wave was a pack we used. And um, sometimes it generates, it generated this folder on its own. Um, but all I did was I did, I did find I had to copy the game list. So for example, let's take SNES CD. Um, I went ahead and deleted it off the ROMs SD. And in the pack itself, there is a game list. And what I did was I just copied over Control C, and then copied that game list over here. 
to the actual Raspberry Pi to the SD card that seemed to work. You'll notice that when you go to ROMs, USB all have everything from this pack in there now because I transferred it over. But unfortunately for me, it might just be my setup. When I, if I only transfer this over and I don't transfer over, so this is the same pack, right? It's the exact same thing because I transferred that. But the one thing you have to do is, yes, now it's on my USB hard drive. You also need to delete the original games from the SD card through the network like I showed you and also transfer over the new game list, right? You want the game list from the add-on pack because that's going to be the most up-to-date game list. That was just the one caveat that I had to do. Um, I remember I didn't do that the first time I set it up, but occasionally I'd get boot errors with the maybe it's the hard drive I'm using. There's just so many variables. It's a maybe just a thing with the script, but I'm just letting you all know that's what I had to do, and I got it working flawlessly after that. Before I did this change, I was having some issues with it. I did want to show Virtual Man's forum. You can go ahead and join for free. A pretty cool community over there as far as, you know, tweaking things and helping each other out. Here's the section on the add-on packs and just want to point out two packs that weren't on this video and there's probably a few more coming. One being the Open Bore pack and then there's also a Commodore 64 pack, which I did not install. But uh, as you saw in this video, we checked out the Dreamcast pack, the PS1 pack, I have the Thomas Wave, PSP, Naomi, Neo Geo CD. I do not have the Commodore 64, Dreamcast, PlayStation 1, and then we already talked about those other ones. Oh, and then the, the old school PC, which is a Scum VM, and then the 3DO. 3DO is not actually an expansion pack. It is a full add-on because uh, 3DO was never uh, included on the original image. Um, and then as far as how many games on each, it's, it's explained here. But as I sh said in the beginning of the video, you know, you now have way over uh, a terabyte of additional games on there. And then I also noticed there's feedback and optimization and fixes. So that's pretty cool that if people have like, oh, in PlayStation 1, when you play Croc, it, you know, there's a tear or it's actually there's a better emulator or actually if you turn on these hacks in RetroArch, it'll run better people can share information like that to just get you know that perfect blend the other thing i'll point out is virtual man himself has um videos on each additional pack you can check out on his youtube channel and he actually goes through the game list so rather than boring you as i scroll through the game list if you want to slow scroll or see a particular game you can go ahead and check that out um, on his channel so this is the SNES CD playing Contra and if you hear in the background it has a really cool soundtrack I got to oh, I've almost beat the game just making this video because when you start Contra you really get into it but uh, what a great game with many different modes and with this added soundtrack it really gave me you know I've probably beat this game dozens and dozens of times you know both one player two player and uh, it just gave a new kind of feel to it so um, if you haven't checked it out there's actually a lot of really cool games for the SNES CD especially um, you know there's a bunch of like Zel versions of Zelda like there's a NES remake of Zelda for SNES and you know a lot of really cool stuff uh, Neo Geo CD a lot of really great games a lot of some people don't really care about Neo Geo CD but it's, you know it's another take on Neo Geo a Thomas Wave, running really well. Then we're gonna check out some Dreamcast, some PlayStation. But as you can see, this is running just as good as if this was on your micro SD card. Now micro SD cards are much cheaper than they were a few years ago, and I'm sure if you watch this video in the future, they'll be even cheaper. So maybe the add-on packs, you just throw them directly onto your SD card, really easy to do. Um, some people don't even have a 512 gigabyte SD card. They're running this on a 32 and they have a one terabyte expansion. I know that um, there is new versions of RetroPie that will now run everything off of a hard drive. Um, unfortunately, this is not the current setup. Um, I'm sure we can build setups like that. Uh, but for now, it's really not a big deal to just put a 32 in there. 
Um, as far as hard drives, you know, Raspberry Pi 4 had USB 3.0, so that has unlocked a lot of that speed and also power you typically need. If you run USB 2.0, you're probably going to need, um, you know, an external power, and then also it's nowhere near as fast as USB 3.0. So um, all these things you have to take into consideration. Here's that um, NES uh, version of Zelda on the NES. Really cool game. Um, so a lot of hard work, a lot of things done. Um, something I didn't speak about either, you know, or a little bit is just that these are tweaked. You know, they're they're running really good. So you're not just getting a ROM dump, um, which some people do, which is, you know, I don't see the difference. I've seen stuff like this before. And, you know, usually what that is is just people have the entire game collection set and they just throw it on the device. Uh, these were kind of gone through. And then, of course, you know, this is kind of the max of the Raspberry Pi. Once he adds Amiga and Commodore 64, um, you know, there's a few more collections that weren't quite complete. But, um, you know, it's pretty comprehensive as it gets. So, um, really cool stuff if you're looking for, you know, the ultimate Raspberry Pi image, you know, low power consumption. It can fit in an arcade cabinet. A lot of pros to it. Uh, look no further. I'll put links to everything in the description below. Um, hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions. And we'll catch you on the next one. What am I watching?